Elections, behind the scenes. Elections, exciting, intense, busy. Our goal, ensure that the millions of registered Maryland voters have the opportunity to vote. But when one election is over, the next election is right around the corner. So how do election officials prepare for the next election? Myth. Once an election is over, there's no more work to do. If there is, there probably isn't that much since the election is over, right? Truth. Each election takes months of preparation, and some of the work may remain unknown until now. Let's drop in on one of our local election boards to get a glimpse of not only what it takes to prepare for an election, but some of the common misconceptions some may have about the process. Voter Registration Myth Voters only register or need to register close to an election. Truth Voters are continually registering and updating their information throughout the year. Did a voter move? change their party affiliation, get a new phone number? Voter registration records are always being updated on a daily basis. Applications not only come in from Maryland's online voter registration system, but can come from other places like the Maryland Department of Motor Vehicles, voter registration volunteers, and in-person requests at the election office. Election staff must process these applications and mail voter notification cards, also known as VNCs. So now that voters are registered, they must have a place to vote. Polling places. Myth. Any type of location can serve as a polling place. So there should always be plenty available. Truth. There are hundreds of polling places in the state of Maryland, consisting of schools, libraries, and fire stations, to name a few, but all must be evaluated to see if they are suitable to be used as a polling place. Election staff manage and coordinate polling places, ensuring that the polling places are available for the next election. In addition, any potential or recently renovated polling places must be surveyed to evaluate its size, location, accessibility, voting space, and parking. After a survey, voting room layouts for each polling place are developed to help plan how the voting space will be set up, where the voting equipment and supplies will be placed, and how voters will navigate the room. Now that we have polling places, someone has to run them during early voting and election day. Polling places are run by election judges, who are sometimes called poll workers. Election judges and outreach. Myth. Election judges are all full-time election staff, so it's easy to find people to run the polling places. Truth. Many election judges are in fact Marylanders from every profession, who are hired to serve during early voting and on election day. Election staff recruit election judges through outreach programs, mailings, and social media. Staff may also attend festivals and events throughout the year. Local election boards hire hundreds of election judges, but their work doesn't end with recruitment efforts. After they are hired, all judges must be trained. All election judges must attend at least one training class before each election, even if they've served as a judge in past elections. Local election boards provide hundreds of training classes to ensure that all of their judges receive training. Training classes are often conducted several times a day over the weeks prior to an election. Coordinating election judge recruitment, polling place assignments, and training classes is no small feat, so election staff definitely have to start early. Interested in giving it a try? We certainly need you. Contact your local election office or check out their website for information. So now that we have registered voters, places to vote, and people to operate the polling places, we still need equipment and supplies to vote, such as paper ballots, ballot scanners that scan and count your marked paper ballot, ballot marking devices that assist voters with disabilities so they can mark their ballots independently, electronic poll books, which verify your registration and check voters in to vote, and election judge supplies, such as forms, privacy folders, pens, and tape to name a few. These are some of the supplies necessary to operate a polling place. 
That's quite a bit of material, and requires secure and sometimes spacious warehouses and rooms to store them. Voting Equipment and Supplies Myth Voting equipment gathers dust between elections. Truth Though the equipment is stored between elections, that doesn't mean we're done with it. Election staff must ensure that voting equipment is regularly examined, batteries charged, repairs completed, and system updates applied. All voting equipment used in an election is tested in a process called Logic and Accuracy Testing, LNA for short. LNA testing is to ensure that every machine is operating correctly and that each machine scans and counts votes accurately before being used during the election. The LNA documents and results are open to the public, so contact your local election office for their schedule. Aside from voting equipment, additional election day supplies must be purchased, stored, repaired, and then packed into various supply bags or containers. All the supplies needed for every polling place are checked to ensure it has all necessary items before it is transported to the polling place. So now that we have our voting equipment and supplies, we can move on to the ballots. Absentee and Provisional Ballots Myth People only request absentee ballots close to an election. Truth Though we do get a surge in requests, Registered Marylanders located all over the world can and do request absentee ballots during a majority of the time between elections, though keep those deadlines in mind. Election staff must process each request so that a ballot, when ballots become available, is sent to the voter. So we're then ready for election day. Most election judges and staff are in place well before dawn. It's a busy and exciting time, but the work doesn't end when the polls close. Many local boards are still working into the night and early morning. Even as the unofficial results are being generated, the polling place equipment, supplies, and ballots must be returned and unpacking begins immediately. Over the next several days after the election, thousands of absentee and provisional ballots must be processed so they can be counted. During canvassing, the absentee and provisional ballots are scanned and tallied so those results can be added to the unofficial results. Some canvassers are trained in classes earlier in the year. On canvassing days, canvassers work in bipartisan pairs, open absentee and provisional ballots, refer them to the county board members if there is a question about the ballot, and exactly duplicate ballots that cannot go through the canvassing room's ballot scanner. Myth: Absentee and provisional ballots don't count since they're reviewed after election day. Truth: Though canvassing takes place several days after election day, the votes count towards the election, since the election itself is not yet certified. Even when election day is over and all of the ballots have been canvassed, there is still more work to do. Every local election board conducts post-election audits. These audits reflect how the Maryland State Board of Elections and local election boards work together to verify the accuracy of the voting system results. And when the election is certified a few weeks after Election Day, preparation for the next election begins again. Our elections can only happen because of the continuing cycle of hard work and dedication from our election community, including staff and election judges. Year after year, the state and local election boards are continuously working to ensure that all eligible voters, when the time comes, can cast their ballot. This video would not have been possible without the assistance of Anne Arundel County Board of Elections, Howard County Board of Elections, the City of Annapolis, Pip Moyer Recreation Center, and our election staff and election judges.